Hello, gorgeous entrepreneur. It's Tash Corbin here and welcome to another episode of the Heart Centered Business Podcast. This is episode number 329, which means you can find all the relevant links and show notes for today's episode over at tashcorbin.com forward slash 329. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you what to do when you see the perfect client ask the perfect question or ask for advice that you could perfectly help with, with your services, but it's in a Facebook group. How do you recruit that person or lean in or say to them, oh my gosh, you need to work with me without bypassing their consent, being spammy or getting them to run away. So this is actually a podcast episode in response to a few questions that came up at a recent workshop of mine. And so if you've ever found yourself in this situation, I think you're going to find this one really helpful. So let's dive on in. I'm Tash Corbin and this is the Heart Centered Business Podcast. First and foremost, now this actually can apply to um, when people comment on things on in Facebook groups or they ask questions in Facebook groups or they engage with someone else's content. But I just want to first and foremost just be really clear on the situation that I'm talking about. So someone's not commenting directly to you or asking you for advice but you can see they're asking for that kind of advice or complaining about that kind of problem. And all you want to do is swoop into the comments and say, this is my expertise, you should work with me, right? So let's say you're a decluttering and feng shui expert and someone's like, oh, I just wish someone would jump on Zoom with me and force me to declutter my wardrobe um, because this is getting ridiculous. And you, all you wanna do is jump into the comments and say, I can, here's my packages, right? Or someone says something, maybe not so I'm ready to buy something, but they just say like, oh, how do I set up this email sequence with this thing in this tool? And you're a systems expert and you're like, that's exactly what I could do. I will help you. Just book a session with me, right? You want to sell to them as a response to something that they've posted on the internet, but they're not talking specifically to you. So the first thing I want to talk about is how not to respond to one of those instances. Do not say in the comments, this is my expertise. You should book a session with me, right? Because someone has been, um, you know, putting something out generally, right? They didn't ask you. They didn't uh, specifically say in a lot of cases that they want to hire someone. Like if they've said, I need to hire a web developer and you're a web developer, of course, make sure that you respond to that. But if they're saying, I need to X, or can someone tell me how to Y, right? They're asking for advice. They're asking a question and they're asking a large scale group of people, right? They're asking in a group or they're asking um, in a comment somewhere and you know, they haven't actually asked you specifically. My advice is not to jump in and sell to them, right? This is my expertise. You can book a session or this is my expertise. We should talk about working together. Oh, if you want to check out more how I can help, here's my website, right? I don't recommend diving straight into a sales pitch. I also don't recommend the, hey, babe, DM me and I can help, right? I see this happen so much in the heart center community. And I just want to reach out to the people who do it and say, do you realize the chances of them actually DMing you is so slim to nil? And also you've just lost an opportunity to get even more clients than this just one person. The other thing I see happen a lot is, oh, I'll give you a free session, right? Because especially in the online business world, like there's a belief that if I can just get them onto a free session, I'll be able to upsell to them straight away. So you just reach out and say, oh, I'll just give you a free session and I'll do this for you. I'll give you a free session and, and we'll work it out together, right? So I don't recommend any of those strategies if you see someone asking for advice, especially not in a Facebook group. The best strategy I can recommend is give the advice. Give the advice. They've asked for advice. Give the advice. Not just in the DM for them privately, not on a free call with them, not only if they pay you, give the advice 
right there in the comments. Now, the way that I do this in my business is I will be in my Facebook group and in other Facebook groups. And if I see someone ask for advice, I'm like, oh, I have a really good strategy for this. I will set a little five minute timer on my phone, right? I go and check my profile, right? So I check my profile for the group. So you can have a specific profile for a Facebook group that you're in. And I just check, is my profile all up to date in that group? If the person sees my advice and goes, ooh, I really, I really like this person, I'm gonna go and stalk them. Will they find my like really easy to understand information about my services? So I check my group profile. I make sure I've got links to my Facebook page on my group profile and on my Facebook profile. And then I go and in the five minutes that I have, I give the advice in the comments. So if someone says, um, I keep attracting people who don't want to buy from me, how do I attract actual ready buyers? I have some really great advice on that. So instead of saying, oh, DM me, or hey, I'll send you a DM with the thing, or here's something here, right? Instead of being elusive, right? Instead of missing out on the opportunity to demonstrate my expertise, not just to the question asker, but to every other witness in that community, I give the advice freely and within a boundary time. So I set my little five minute timer, I go and check my profile, make sure I've got my links up to date, and then I give the advice. How amazing is that, right? So I give the advice freely because in Facebook communities in particular, my goal is to, um, to establish myself as an expert, to establish myself as a leader in the space. And not a leader because I own the space or I'm a leader because someone gave me some random badge. I establish myself as a leader because people look to me for advice. I establish myself as a leader because I'm generous and I connect with people in that community and I behave like a leader. I demonstrate strong leadership qualities. I help people who need help and I help them freely, right? I, I look for people who I can support. I connect people with the help that they need. That's being a leader, especially in community like that, where we have this beautiful model of shared leadership. Inside the heart center community, um, I would say there are about 50 to 100 people who I would consider like, a plus leaders of the space. And then there's another 200 to 500 people who I would consider quite consistent leaders in the space as well. So the Heart Centered Soul Driven Entrepreneurs Facebook group has this beautiful model of shared leadership. And not only do I allow other people to be a leader in the space, I encourage other people to be a leader in the space. Because if someone's asking a question about feng shui, I'm not a feng shui expert. If someone's asking for advice in parenting, not a parenting expert. If like, so I can't be all things to all people in that community, nor would I want to be. So one, I set a five minute timer. Two, I quickly check my profile, make sure I've got my links to my page, and then I go and give the advice. This then allows people to lean in right? This allows people to lean in. If they like my advice and they're like, oh my gosh, you sound like the perfect person who could help me with this. How, like, can I DM you? Can I ask you a question? Can I, you know, where can I find out more about your business? Or they don't even tell me that. They just go, oh, she's great and go and stalk me and go and follow me on Facebook, find my page, right? That allows them to lean in. I haven't bypassed their consent. I haven't, you know, held, dangled a carrot in front of them and made them jump for it. I've just given them the advice and it gives them an opportunity to lean in. And it is the perfect opportunity for other people in that community to see how helpful I am, to see how smart I am, to see how amazing my strategy is, to see that I give advice and that I'm a leader. So, that is my advice, what to do when your perfect client asks for advice in a Facebook group. It's fairly straightforward. Give them the advice in the comments, right there in the comments. There are a few little things that you can do to make sure that it's boundary, set a timer, and make sure that if they go to find out more about you, they can. Make sure you check your profile, make sure you've got links to your Facebook page. But honestly, showing up and giving advice and answering people's questions without attachment, without making them jump through hoops, without feeling like I need to turn every single interaction into a sale is how I was able to scale my business up so quickly, be seen as a leader in so many Facebook communities and in so many spaces online 
and it's just been an amazing growth opportunity for my business. Now, I do want to say there's one time where I don't recommend that you even answer people asking questions and that is on other people's pages and comments. So let's say you are in a Facebook community and someone gives an, a tip about copywriting and you can see that someone in the comments has asked that person, oh, this is great, could you advise A, B or C? If you're a copywriter, you don't swoop in on that other person's um, space, right? They initiated the conversation and someone has asked them a question I think that that's out of integrity to then go and swoop in and take over as the advisor or helper for that person. Similarly, if you are following someone else's Facebook page and someone asks that person for advice, swooping in with your advice in the comments, I don't think is in integrity, right? It's that person's space. That person is, that's their expertise. That's their expert space. So, um, I don't, I definitely don't like swoop in and give advice on other people's pages. The only time I would comment is to talk up the person whose page I was on. So, uh, for example, there was someone, I, I am in Bev Roberts List Growth Club. It's an amazing space. Make sure you go and check it out. Um, and on um, Bev's Facebook page, she was talking about list growth and she was talking about some different concepts. And someone asked in the comments, um, you know, do you recommend A or B for um, growing my list if I have this type of business? And so I didn't go in and give them advice. Instead, I said, oh, you are in such good hands. Bev has such great advice about making, choosing which type of um, free resource to create. Um, and if you're not in List Growth Club, this month we're working on X, right? Because I want, I want to help that person to, um, you know, make the sale, right? I want Bev to get that person in List Growth Club. I want to reassure that person they've asked a great question and they've asked the right person. So I'm not swooping in and saying I'm the expert here. I'm simply um, reassuring them, good question to ask, and that's a good person, you know, and it, you've asked the right person because that person is an expert in this space. So hopefully that gives you some advice and some insights into giving advice and helping people who are asking for support in a Facebook community. And I have a little uh, ulterior motive for doing this uh, podcast episode this week. And that is because we are bringing market research and question asking back into the Heart Centered Soul Driven Entrepreneurs Facebook group. You may have noticed for the past few months, actually I think it's 12 months now, we had to close off uh, allowing people to jump into the Heart Center community and ask questions like hashtag help any day. We used to use hashtag help any day or ask any day and you could ask questions of the community. Now the reason why we had to shut it down was because m our community was being targeted by two mentors in particular who had highlighted to their students that my group was very engaged, had a highly engaged audience and had taught them strategies to come and fish with a PH, fish in the Heart Centre community to spam people. And so what ended up happening was the group was targeted and there were all these people coming in and asking for fake advice. So they would say, oh, I'm getting a new laptop. Should I stick with my Windows PC or should I get a Mac, right? They actually didn't want that. They weren't asking that question. They were just looking for as many comments as possible on their post so they could go and send DMs to all the commenters and say, oh my gosh, thank you so much for your advice. What's your business about? And then they had this like DM script that they would use to try and recruit that person to their Facebook page and then pitch them a service. So it was this really yucky, really manipulative, really out of integrity sales strategy that was being taught. And unfortunately, the people who were teaching it were telling their students, oh, and there's this amazing giant group called Heart Center Soldier and Entrepreneurs. And everyone in that group is so super helpful and you get hundreds and hundreds of comments. So you should go and fish in there. And so in order to protect the community from the spamming and the phishing and the manipulation and all of the things that happened as a result of that, 
we closed down asking questions in the community for an extended period of time so that those two mentors would stop recommending people coming and fishing in the heart-centered space. Now that seems, the coast seems to be clear. I've got a couple of spies out there checking. Um, so it seems like the coast is clear and we can go back to letting people ask questions in the heart center community. So if you've got questions, if you need advice, if you want help with your business, you want help with parenting, you want whatever it is, we're creating some boundary and structured ways that you can ask for advice and get help from people in the heart centered community. So now you have the opportunity to ask questions in the community and you have a really clear strategy on how you can react and respond in that community to present yourself as a leader, invite leads to lean in and not get all spammy and pushy and get all attached to turning every single conversation into a sale and instead come at it from a space of abundance and recognizing that a rising tide lifts all ships. Now, if you're looking for all the details on how to ask questions in the community, what the boundaries are and what the new hashtags are, then simply head into the Heart Centered Soldier and Entrepreneurs group. I'll put the link in the show notes, tashcorbin.com forward slash 329 and go and head to the pinned announcements. My team are all set and ready to go to help you navigate it. So um, if you have any questions about it, just comment on the pinned announcement and my team will be able to answer any questions that you may have. And please do make sure that you read that pinned announcement in full before diving in and asking your questions, uh, doing any market research or seeking advice. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Heart Centered business podcast. I'm so excited to see what happens in our community now that we get to actually help each other far more openly. And until next time, I cannot wait to see you shine. Bye for now. Would you like more tips, tools, and resources to help you grow your heart-centered business? Head to tashcorbin.com today.